camera and mute. Can you all still hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. So we're going to continue tonight uh, with our study from this book, The Twelve traits of the great. We are slowly working our way through them. Um, tonight we're going to explore uh, the trait of focus. And so um, I actually thought it interesting that this was our topic for tonight because I had went to my parents' uh, digital life group on Sunday, Awakening, and the topic was distraction, which is the obvious uh, opposite of focus. And so it was interesting. And and on that call, uh, we, we learned a lot about distraction and the intention of distraction, but a couple things that stuck out to me that go well with, with what we're talking about tonight is um, how distraction really is designed to render us powerless and unproductive by dividing our attention. And those who would say, well, I'm a professional uh, scatterbrain or I'm, I'm a professional at mind wandering, uh, tend to label that multitasking, but science, and, and I know Donna would back me up on this brain science, says we really cannot function at full capacity, giving less than our full focus to the task at hand. We call it multitasking, and we say we can, but the brain is not designed to do that. It's already doing a whole lot at one time, just the fact that we're breathing in this moment. It's already doing what it's supposed to be doing naturally. And so when we think we're multitasking and I can think on 12 things at once, we are actually fooling ourselves and we're dividing our attention, which actually divides our effectiveness. And so we're actually giving less than our full focus on whatever's at, at, in front of us, whether that be you know a work assignment, a conversation, a ministry moment. You, we cannot multitask being fully present and being fully focused. And in that conversation about distraction, my dad kept saying over and over, distraction, distraction. And, and, and as often as the case, like I heard and saw the word differently because I'm just word minded. And I kept hearing this as in, which means to pull away or pull apart and then traction, which is the grip that someone or something has on a road or a path. And so really it's a perfect illustration of what distraction is designed to do, which is to cause us to lose our grip, to veer from our destination, our intended path, and to lose our momentum, both the current momentum and our future momentum. That is what distraction is intended to do if we allow it to do. So, and so if we want to do something specific and enduring with our lives, and I would agree that all of us do, we're all here because we're those kind of people, um, we have to understand that a focused approach to a goal is much more powerful than any haphazard approach, just kind of throwing darts at the air. Um, successful leaders, will squeeze more effectiveness from themselves than their counterparts who are unfocused. Successful people are focused people. They learn to hone in upon their targeted results, their intended goals, their dreams, and they, um, now I don't know anything about guns, and so this author, I'm just gonna full disclosure, his whole first two pages was the story about guns and the difference between rifles and shotguns and this and that and blasting this and inertia that and I was like you have lost me but what I did get out of it was was uh those that are focused we expend our internal gunpowder in an effort to propel our lives forward towards those goals towards those dreams towards uh the targeted results and I do the author a disservice uh, in paraphrasing his great illustration and story by bringing it down to that. Sorry, I don't talk about what I don't know. And I don't know. I've shot a gun, but, and actually I was a good, I, I had good aim, but I couldn't tell you the difference between any of those guns. So great story. I can't tell you about it. All I know is focus is like internal gunpowder 
Uh, and again, it propels us forward towards those goals, towards those uh, targets. I see in the comments, Mark Ward is an awesome teacher. So Mark Ward is your gun person if you want to learn about guns. I am not that person. Um, but I can talk to us tonight about focus. Um, every great person historically has been a person of focus, including Paul, who told the Philippians, but this one thing I do, this is Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14, this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And I absolutely love the way this is written in the Passion Translation. And I'm gonna back up one verse. So this is Philippians 3, 12 through 14 in the Passion Translation. I love what it says, it says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I am pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointing of Jesus. I love that. I have this one compelling focus. I fasten my heart to the future. I love, love, love that. And that is what focus is. Focus is fastening our heart forward. Focus equals direction. It's, it's, it's forward movement. It equals direction. Instead of just aimlessly wandering, focus allows us to be arrows in the hand of God that are aimed with precision at the target of his will and his purpose. And not just in general, but his, his purposes and plans that are written about my life, his purposes and plans that are written about Brooke's life, his purposes and plans that are written about Neva's life. It makes us arrows in his hand so that we 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 know God is a great shot. He's a bullseye kind of arrow. I don't know why I keep doing this. That's like a dart. The bow and arrow. See, I'm not a weaponry person. I'm getting out of my depth here. Bow and arrow is like the pulling back, the arrow. Um, but he is a precision shooter, and he hits the bullseye every time with a life that is surrendered to him and a life that will be focused. And so, um, unfortunately... We know most people are not focused in this way, particularly in their approach to the future. In fact, most people live more frantic and scattered lives, feeling like they're expending great amounts of energy, right? Like I'm doing the hamster wheel, I'm going, 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 but never really striking a target. Think about this. Have you ever worked nonstop all day long, but at the end of the day, you really couldn't remember anything meaningful that you did with that day? Have you ever felt like completely exhausted and spent, like you've done the hamster wheel all day long, but at the end of that day, you couldn't really, you couldn't really nail down one significant thing that you could say I did with my day today um, to advance, specifically to advance your dreams or to attain your goals or your purposes or your passions for your life. Many, if not most people can relate to that because, um, because it's so easy for lives to end up being revolved around and devoted to what's urgent instead of what's important, right? Um, end up living lives that just are really just a, a response to daily emergencies instead of the execution of a specific plan, of a focused plan. And when we live that way, everything becomes emergent, right? When you just live on the hamster wheel, everything becomes emergent and you're just putting out little fires all day long. And at the end of the day, you're exhausted, but have you been productive? Have you moved towards those purposes? Have you, have you fastened your heart to the future like Paul said um, in that version? Um, and so the problem there again is a lack of focus. And we've talked about this at length. Uh, Pastor Doug has talked before about big rocks, being able to prioritize 
the things that are important over just the things that are urgent, putting the big rocks of priority. Uh, if you if you had, the illustration is if you had like a vessel and a bunch of rocks to fill, you put the big rocks in first and then the little ones you can shake it together, but prioritizing, telling our time where to go. We determine what is, what is really urgent, what really is emergent, what really is a priority in our lives. Again, we, we determine that with focus. And again, that's, this is all in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. None of this is meant to be outside of with the Holy Spirit, obviously, um, but that's the balancing statement. Um, the person with focus is virtually an unstoppable force. Um, although the powers of nature, the realities of time, opposition of other people may slow him down, in the end he will prevail because he will not relent until that one thing, those, those dreams, those passions, that purpose in his heart, that thing that wakes you up in the morning um, and brings you to life until those things come to fruition. It's those things you give your life to and you will not relent and you will, you'll be resilient in the face of opposition because I know this is what God's called me to do. I have to give my life to the, this is a goal I'm not willing to sacrifice. It's a promise or a, or a, or a target I'm not willing to just kind of, well, I've come this far. No, the resilient focus person says, I haven't come this far to only come this far. You celebrate the journey, but you don't just kind of land halfway there. Does that make sense? You guys tracking with me? Awesome. Um, part of the focus for believers, um, part of focus for believers is also bringing our lives into order. That That is part of focused living is bringing our lives into order. That includes everything We've been given stewardship of, and that can be a myriad of things, but our possessions, our responsibilities, our ministries, our families, our homes, our relationships, our jobs, and ourselves, spirit, soul, and body. We're talking about that in her. All things, bringing those things into order is part of a focused, driven life. Jesus said in Luke eleven thirty four, when your eye is single, your whole body is full of life. When your eye is single, it's talking about when your eye is focused, when there's, when there's a focus, when you've set your face like flint, when you live with vision and purpose in front of you and not distracted by every single thing that comes our way. When we are focused, the whole body is full of light. The ability to focus on those primary and, and overriding objectives without that enemy of distraction is the ability to do great things. It gives us the ability to do great things. And again, that's what we're here for. That's what we're talking about is being great, unleashing the greatness in us. And again, with so much going on around us at all times, like we live in a world that is full of distractions, correct? I mean, like distractions all around us at all times. There's so much pulling at us, so much pulling on our our attention, and we talked about this again on Sunday, so much of that really is the tactic of the enemy. We're talking about being distracted, losing our traction, distraction from the things of God, from the focus that he has for us. We have to understand there's an enemy tactic. There's a plan behind that to pull us away. And there's so much at all times designed to pull us away that we have to develop the discipline of focus. And I know that's not always our favorite word because we'd like to just say, oh, discipline can just like, or focus can just fall out of the sky and land in my heart and I'll just be focused. It doesn't work that way. It is, it is, it is a practice. It is a discipline. And, and we have to develop that, that focus muscle, that discipline of focus if we're to be effective and fruitful um, in order to extract the highest quality from this one life that we've been given. God has given us one life. He's written one story for each of our lives. And in order to extract the highest quality from that life, um, in order to fulfill the, 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 greatest, the greatest purpose, the greatest potential, in order to truly live out our God-given purposes, we must master the art 
of focus. Maybe that's a softer way of putting develop the discipline of focus. We have to master the art of focus. For those of you that are more artistically, creatively minded, there you go. Master the art of focus. Um, and this often requires us learning how to distinguish between what is good and what is God. And there can be, that can be hard to figure out because there can be a billion good things that want our attention every single day. And we have to be able to learn how to distinguish what is good and what is God? What does God want me to give my attention to? If our attention is like, like a resource, like money, what am I to deposit my attention, my focus into? Because it is a draw on us. We are giving that brain power, that, that, that mental capacity to something in that moment. Uh, what does God want me to give that to? The author writes, you can do anything in life you want. So we can give our attention and our focus to anything we want, but you cannot do everything. So for the person on here who thinks I can do everything, sorry to burst your bubble, we can do anything we want, but we cannot do everything. And we certainly cannot do everything at once. So greats learn how to focus their limited time, their limit, limited energy and resources on their soul passions and purposes in life, which again requires that we discover that. God, what is your purpose for my life? What is your plan for my life? They also learn how to, and, and this probably comes up in so many of the topics that we cover because it's such a big deal. And again, I know that Donna will back me up on this. Greats have to learn how to harness their thoughts. That's part of the focus process. If a man's mind is focused, the man's life will be focused. If a man's mind is focused, a man's life will be focused. Where the mind goes, the man goes. We've talked about that before. It's said that we have somewhere between 60 to 80,000 thoughts a day. Some of us more are, are on the higher end than maybe the other spectrum, but it said somewhere between 60 to 80,000 thoughts, and the average is up to 2,500 to 3,300 an hour, give or take a thought or two. And within those 80,000 thoughts, the passions that are strongest in our hearts become the thoughts that are most prevalent in our minds. The passions that are strongest in our heart those purposes and passions that are just written into our spiritual DNA, those things that stir us and wake us and move us, those things that are most prevalent in our hearts become the thoughts that are most prevalent in our minds. The thoughts that are most prevalent in our mind become the forces that dominate and drive our lives. Again, where the mind goes, the man goes. Um, too many scattered thoughts scattered in too many directions, divide a person's energy, potential, and opportunities for success. It, again, we're just, we're like dispersing ourselves instead of a focused life and, and trying to do everything at once instead of doing those one things. Like Paul said, this one thing I do, I fashion my heart forward. Um, too many scattered thoughts scattered in too many directions can divide a person's energy potential and opportunities for success. The juggling of too many balls brings a greater likelihood of dropping them all. Been there, done that, got the bumper sticker, t-shirt. Too many balls juggling only brings a greater likelihood of dropping them. The pursuit of too many destinations brings greater confusion on the journey, and we really just end up colliding and ending up nowhere on the side of the road, wishing and regretting lost opportunities. Focus is a prerequisite for success and the assurance for progress. As we've studied in our previous series, detox, uh, as they study in capture and some of our other Carolyn Leaf discussions, I gotta look at my time real quick. Sorry. Okay. Um, the brain and the mind is a marvelous, incredible thing capable of, of being wired and rewired into a focus machine. 
And Carolyn Leaf says, we have the ability to be our own brain surgeons. I remember when I read that, I was like, oh, that's so powerful. I mean, scripture just, ba or it's, ba that backs up what scripture says. We can take captive every thought. We can think on these things that we have the ability to be our own, be our own brain surgeons how we can change our focus of our lives and learn to focus on the things we were created to by changing the repetition of our thoughts, the repetition uh, of our thought life and what our brain manufactures. And this is simplified because I'm also not a brain surgeon. So we know now I'm not a marksman and I'm not a brain surgeon, but by changing the soundtrack of our mind, the thoughts that play over and over and over, we actually are changing the focus in our life, and eventually, again, changing our direction. I wanna read this story that uh, is about NASCAR, of all things. So he talked about guns and NASCAR. So here you go, here's the book for those of you that like guns and NASCAR, but it's such a great story, and it goes so well with what we're talking about tonight. But again, I didn't, wasn't gonna try to paraphrase it, I'm just gonna read it to us. He says, I have another good friend in the South who is a professional NASCAR, driver and he once told me about the training process that new drivers undergo before they are allowed to drive in nascar events he told me the primary concern of all new race car drivers is the wall nobody wants to hit the wall especially at 200 miles per hour he also explained to me that the centrifugal force centrifugal force of the automobile tends to propel the car directly toward the wall as the car speeds around the track. So the wall is a constant prob problem for all drivers, and it is the primary fear for new drivers. Everything is pulling the driver toward the wall as he drives around the oval track. So an inexperienced driver tends to be very afraid of hitting the wall. Well, yeah. Consequently, he explained, the wall is all a new driver thinks about. As he drives faster and faster, he keeps telling himself, don't hit the wall, don't hit the wall. The wall becomes his focus and the avoidance of the wall, not winning the race, becomes his primary objective. As they are learning to function as NASCAR rookies, these drivers are actually trained to turn their thoughts away from the wall and onto the infield. Rookie drivers quickly learn that you are drawn toward that thing which dominates your thoughts. And so they are deliberately retrained in their thinking to direct their focus on the infield instead of the wall. Over time, their focus is drawn away from the wall and toward the infield. And as a result, the feeling that they are being pulled toward the wall as they speed around the track is drastically reduced and the crippling fear is completely disarmed. They become potential winners. You are dominated by what you choose to think about. And perhaps that explains why advertisers spend millions upon millions of dollars telling you the same thing over and over and over again. These marketers want to get you in the habit of thinking about their products, and they develop that habit of thinking in you through repetition. Over and over, they show you the same images. Over and over, they whisper the slogan. Then as time marches on, you will think like they want you to think and you will go looking for their products when you find yourself in need of them. Focus is the natural result of what you think about, and what you think about is created by repetition. Through repetition, you can change your thinking, and by changing your thinking, you can change your focus. Focus is the key to success in everything you will set out to do. Focus is the key to success in everything you will set out out to do. As we wrap up tonight, I'm going to give us our action steps regarding focus tonight. And so if you want to write these down. I will put them up on Legacy Zoom. There are three action steps. Number one is ask. We talked about being able to, to truly ask God, what do you want me to focus on today? What do you want me to give my focus to today? Obviously, we want to ask big picture too, but uh, to practice this, what do you want me to give my focus to today? Practice that this week, every single day. Commit to these next seven days. Ask God, what do you want me to give my focus to? Number two, identify. Identify the distractions in your life. 
Identify what distracts you. For, for all of us, it's gonna be different things, but this requires thinking about what we're thinking about, paying attention to what we're paying attention to, the things that are easily pulling us away from our focuses. What are those things? Again, for each of us, this could be a myriad of different things, but pay attention to that. And that's what happened to me after our life group this, this past Sunday. I was just that much more aware of distractions and those things that it, it's, I, am, I am one of those people that labels myself a multitasker and thinks I can do 12 things at once. And then and what, am, what am I really doing in this moment? I'm making a list over here and I'm, tr I'm supposedly reading, reading this book right here or reading my word and I'm making a grocery list. And so I was that much more cognizant to be mindful of that. And so catching ourselves, being able to identify those things and those moments that were easily distracted. And, and the third one is then uh, focus. So ask, identify, and focus. Actively retrain your brain. Again, we're going to be our own brain surgeons this week. Um, remembering that repetition is key. So keep setting your mind back. It, it is a discipline. It's like the moment I noticed my thoughts were wandering. Okay, well, I just read two paragraphs, but what did I read? Okay, I'm going to go back and set my mind on what I'm doing or whatever the task is. And so literally catching ourselves and retraining the brain. So ask, identify, and focus. And so that is our Zoom for tonight. I so...